New pets are always great. Um, we are pretty maxed out as far as I've, I've been told. <laughs> so we won't be getting a new pet anytime soon. Hey guys, so I'm sure there's some of you out there that are considering whether they should or shouldn't get a cat. So we thought we would give you a list of our pros and cons of owning a cat, seeing as we have a collection of them already. So we're gonna jump back and forwards. I'm doing all the cons, Loretta's doing all the pros. Let's get going. My first one is that they could be considered addictive. I mean, we started with one and now we're stuck with five of them. Not that it's necessarily stuck a bad. With. <laughs> Not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but you know, maybe they, well, some people say that they're a little bit like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. I'm very much the kind of person, if there's an animal in distress, I can't really say no, ever. And that's how a lot of our cats happened, where I would see a kitten in a desperate situation, and or a sick kitten, like Ryu, who we're looking at right now, was a pet shop cat, which I know one shouldn't support that kind of stuff, but he was so small and so sick when I saw him that I just couldn't leave him in that situation so I just grabbed him and got him to a vet and then I got emotionally attached and he stayed. Then one of the pros is you will always have company when you have a cat. Um, a lot of people seem to think that dogs are better because they're more attached to the human being but having a cat around is very much You'll always have someone who's around the house, who you can talk to, who will sit with you or sit near you at least, and you know that your house is never empty, which I think is one of the greatest things, especially because Toby, um, Toby travels quite a lot for work, so there are days where I'm I'm alone, and obviously I work from home as well, so I'm I'm home all the time, and it, it's nice to know that. I have the cats here, if I'm feeling lonely, I can go hug one of them, I can go snuff one of them. I know that a lot of cat people do that. We should have put that in the weird things cat people do list. Stick your face in their fur. Stick your face in their fur and inhale. <laughs> um, so I think, especially for me or for people who, who tend to be lonely, I think cats are a great, great company to have. I think it, that, that's kind of a pet pro and con as well. Yeah. Okay, then the next con would be the vet bills but I suppose this also comes with a lot of these are going to be pros and cons to have a pet. Cats might be a bit more of a challenge because some of them depending where you live they might get off your property and they might get injured or get sick from somewhere else so on but I think in general Cats vet are bills also very very good at hiding pain and hiding illnesses so a lot of times when your cat does get sick it means that it can be quite serious and it can uh, end up with a higher vet bill than it would for, for any other animal because you might see something earlier in another animal than with a cat. For example, with the abscesses, like we, we did that video which we'll link up, up in the corner. Nino, my mom's cat, will sometimes have a paw that is like three times the size and he will not be limping. So you won't see that he's injured until the swelling is physically so big that you can actually see it. And by then, obviously, the abscess needs to be drained, the paw needs to be shaved, so it's it's a bigger vet bill than with our dog, who will injure her paw and she'll immediately start limping. So we'll automatically know something's wrong. Or she'll act very down. So I think with cats specifically, the vet bills tend to be a little bit higher just because they're so good at masking problems. And I think with the vet bills goes other bills, such as food. You need to keep in mind what you're paying for their food. I mean, our food bills went up now because we changed them all to a raw food diet but it's just something that needs to be kept in mind maybe not necessarily a con but it's a consideration it's always a consideration when you get a pet you need to be aware that you will need to be able to care for that pet never just get a pet because you think it'll be fun always take into consideration that there are there's a responsibility to being a pet owner and you should um, help well if they're sick you have to take them to the doctor it's the same as having a child you wouldn't let your child sit around sick at home you have to get them checked out and take it from there um, the next pro for me is that and that is very cat um, specific is that they're quite independent where a lot of other pets including dogs will need quite a lot of attention and you need to walk them and you need to physically they'll demand for you to give them attention cats are generally quite happy to be left alone 
So when I'm working, relating it back to myself, um, I'll generally have cats hanging around the same room, so I know they're there and they, I have the company, but they don't necessarily need to be like on top of me and wanting to go out to play and so on, except for Momo, who's special. <laughs> but all the others, um, Ryu will, the last few days, has just been sleeping on the bed like he's doing now while I'm working. So if I feel like taking a break, I can go lie next to him and just hang out with him a little bit. And then he's just as happy to go to the, well, they can go to the loo on their own. They don't need to be let out. They can just go in and out through one of the windows. You don't need to like babysit them the entire day. Yeah, it's one of the main reasons why I prefer cats over dogs. Just because if you don't feel like it, you can just let them do their own thing. Dogs tend to be very clingy sometimes. I mean, especially Sasha. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, other pets as well. I mean, the rats are surprisingly high maintenance as well, because you do want to have that interaction with them, take them out of their cage and so on. There's daily cleaning of the cage. I think cats are generally quite low maintenance, actually, as far as pets go. And for this point, I'm going to link our vacation horror story video up above. Whenever you go on holiday with any pet, you have to consider what you're going to do with that pet while you're on holiday. Do you take it with? Do you put it in a kennel? Do you, put, do you, you know, get someone to foster it or look after it? And then there's always considering what might happen while you're away and that kind of stuff, like what happened with us. We didn't foresee anything ha going wrong, but you know. Something did. And in this case, again, cats are probably more difficult than dogs because a lot of places nowadays are dog friendly. So you can easily, and dogs aren't so, so tricky about getting used to the car and so on. They generally, cats are more um, territorial. They're more place, they love the, their home. Whereas dogs are more related to the human, so as long as they're with the human, they're quite happy. So I know a lot of people take their dogs with on holiday, which is great. I know there's people taking their cats with on holiday. I don't think our cats would deal very well with being moved six hours in a car to a different location that they don't know. And besides the fact that um, most places in South Africa, at least, are definitely not cat friendly. They'll be dog friendly, not cat friendly. But then also, dogs will much easier take to someone who's looking after them, I think. Cats are very owner bound. So as soon as you have someone else in the house, a lot of the times the cats will run away or something. Luckily for us, it will most depend of our on cats your... are fine on it. And it'll depend on your dog. I'm sure there are dogs out there that are more, that are more difficult. Sasha, and we will do a video. I know I've had a lot of questions asking if we'll do a video about her. We will. Um, Sasha is super easygoing. She just loves all humans. So no matter, it really doesn't matter who we get in for her. She will just as be, be just as happy with a complete stranger as with my little sister. Um, so the next pro for me is that cats are very entertaining. So There's never a dull moment in this house. We all know that cats like to sleep and they do spend, I think, an average of like 18 hours of sleep, which is great when you're working from home. They are also have their moments where they are really funny and they'll do really silly stuff. Momo especially, who has zoomies every morning and every afternoon. And when he goes up the cat tree, I mean, he's upside down, sideways, playing with his tail, he goes absolutely bonkers. And he tends to do that during um, Toby's morning Zoom meeting, which is fantastic because you'll see he'll be trying to keep a straight face while to his right, like one meter away, the cat is upside down hanging like one paw in the air of the cat tree. <laughs> Ironically, it's difficult to film the, him doing this because he stops as soon as he sees the camera. So, sorry. <laughs> and he'll just zoom around the house. He also and we'll try to get this on camera at some point. When he has the zoomies, he has a very specific run. He kind of looks like a monkey. He kind of like does this like round back and then he like bounces more than runs. It's really, really funny. And he does it every morning and every every evening. And then, I mean, the others are also quite funny. Ryu will... If we I give don't them catnip, all of them get a little bit cuckoo. Yeah, that as well. Um, Alice in her old age has moments where she'll randomly she'll be like sitting somewhere and then a toy will be like lying within her vicinity and she'll suddenly out of nowhere have like a three second like playtime where she'll just like whack this toy and then run away which is super funny to watch. Ryu, I don't know if it's entertaining or upsetting, a little bit of both. Um, because of his fur he and he likes to be outside he will go out and he'll roll around somewhere and then he'll come back inside and all I see is leaves, dirt and whatever else is in our garden being dragged and like dropped as he walks. In winter is absolute worse when it's all dry and dusty outside and then all of them bring in who knows what. And on one side, yes, it is upsetting because I need to now get out the vacuum cleaner and, and so on. But on the other side, it is quite comical because he'll come in and he'll literally like shed, shed leaves as he walks, which is quite funny. And that leads us very nicely into the next con, which is 
You just simply cannot have nice things when you have cats. All of our, our brand new sofa lasted I think a couple of days before someone started to do And I don't care if laws. you tell me that that's bad behavior. I know I'm not the only one out there. I, I'm sure there's some really well behaved cats out there that don't scratch the furniture. But we've tried everything from spray bottles to that spray to get them away from furniture. Nothing works. They don't care. And I mean we have cat trees everywhere. Our whole house is kitted out with things for them to scratch. If they feel like scratching on something, they'll do it. So our sofa um, is in a horrible shape now. And then if you have something on a counter, something on your desk, it will they, get thrown down. They play down. a lovely game of throw this down, pick it up for me and I'll throw it down again. <laughs> Which is lovely at night as well. Um, specifically, Momo and Ryu have recently taken to sitting on my desk and then reaching over to the shelves next to my desk and casually while we sleep start chucking stuff down, which is great because it's, it's work stuff. So it's always great when you wake up in the morning and half your papers are lying on the floor in a different order. So the next pro for me is, and that's also cat, I mean there are some dog related things as well, other pet related, but there are some very specific points for cats is the health benefits of owning a pet and specifically owning a cat. I read recently that it's been proven that purring can actually end kneading can have really, really great physical health benefits and um, also reduce anxiety. And as someone who has issues with anxiety and mental health problems, I know that just having the cats around and having just like a silent companion that you know will always be there for you is, is really, really great. So, and there's nothing, that they also know when you're not well, especially Kebby is very attuned to, to people's feelings. So if the other day I had two days where I was feeling a little under the weather and I sat on the couch and she was immediately on top of me and she'd purr and she'd encourage me to stroke her and it's just so comforting and I'm sure all of you will be able to relate to that, that it's especially when you're not feeling well, having an animal there who, who gives you extra attention and just shows that they care is sometimes nearly better than having a human there to watch out for you. Then my last con is something that every pet owner will know and that is dealing with the lo loss of a pet I mean we know their lifespans are short for them we're their entire lives but for us they're only a short portion of ours but we have an obligation to make that short period of time as good for them as possible and that makes dealing with the loss a little bit better for me it's specifically if a cat dies of old age rather than an illness or something happening but it's just something that you need to keep in mind when you do get a pet it's yeah. unavoidable and I know there's people who will never get pets again when they go through it. Um, I'm not someone who, who does that. I no, no matter what the pet passes from, I mean we've had, we've had both situations. Toby had a cat called Matisse who died of old age just before he moved in with me and evidently that cat had decided he was born in that house. He lived 15 years? 16. 16 years in that house and he must have felt the move coming and he decided no, this ain't happening and he he eventually very quickly passed and it was okay because he was 16 and he had a really really great life and then on the other hand we've had um i've had two situations where we had kittens uh pass away uh one from fip and it's it's tragic but i always see on the bright side that that kitten which we got from the spca um had three weeks mm. of living in a house being adored being played with before she passed away instead of passing away in in a shelter environment yeah we always make sure we give them the best lives that they can have for the short little period that we do have them yeah it's it's yeah like like toby said they're just a short part of our life but we're the entire life so the the only thing we can do is just make sure that that life for them is the best possible life we can give them and we we really strive to do that we we will pretty much bend over backwards for all of our pets. Yeah, and it's just something for people to keep in mind. I don't know if people give pets for Christmas and stuff, and I always think that's so, unless it's well thought out. And you know that you the know. person is looking to get a pet and, yeah. and which pet and so on and so forth, uh, un unless you have all the information. It's a big responsibility. I mean, especially for, for some animals, cats being able to live up to 20, 22 years in good cases. Um, dogs, I think 10 to, 10 to 12, maybe up to 15. Um, we have a bearded dragon, they're looking I think at 12 to 15, it's also quite a long lifespan. We have a snake who can live up to 20 years, rats a little shorter, so 
it, it's but it's still a responsibility even rats who have a lifespan of two to three years if you're lucky that doesn't mean that you don't have to take them to the vet when they're sick you still have to give them the best life possible and care for them so it is it's a big responsibility and it shouldn't be taken lightly and then our last ending up on a more happy note on a happier note which is theoretically kind of linked to the other one in a lot of cases i think there's nothing greater than getting a new pet or a new and, kitten or new, new kittens kitten. are just the most entertaining yes and and we we had the situation with momo specifically where we had just lost a cat and we were saying no we're gonna wait a little and our vet actually in that moment was like listen have a look at at this kitten because the best way to heal a heart is to have something else to care for and to some fill people, that void some people might find that a bit off like they like to have a little bit of a mourning period but I it's not it like it's not like we didn't mourn though yeah. I, I feel like people always like will tell you oh you're replacing your your, your pet so quickly but that's really not what you're doing you're, you're saving another life in theory um, if you're rescuing and which we encourage everyone to do yes absolutely and None, none of our pets that have passed we take lightly. And there, there's one specific we, cat who, who, who I was very close to, who died early, hit by a car. Um, he was only three, and I still miss him on a daily basis. I think about him, and I wish he was here and what he would be like because he was very close with Alice, Alice as well, and he was about the same age as her. And we keep little mementos of all of them. Yes, and we we miss all of them. So it's not like getting a new kitten replaces the pet that has passed that's not at, not at all the point it's just it's a good distraction it's another life saved it's and there's something really i mean really enjoyable about going to a shelter picking out a cat going to a breeder whatever going to find a kitten and then seeing the joy on your kid's face or your own face whatever and picking out some new family member and then playing with them especially kittens and, and puppies because they are a little higher maintenance when they're young so it'll and they're really amusing i mean kittens are the funniest thing in the world they're so so playful and always up to no good and it's just th there's nothing that will make the heart. yeah there's nothing that will make you smile more than a kitten there really isn't in my opinion like I, I i don't think i've ever walked up to a kitten and not like picked it up and gone oh my little baby and felt immediately happier in my heart <laughs> so i think yeah new pets are always great um we are pretty maxed out as far as i've i've been told <laughs> So we won't be getting a new pet anytime soon. I know someone asked about introducing a kitten to an older cat. And I promise you, we will do it eventually. We just need a, you know. What we can do in the meantime, and I did put that in the comment. Um, <laughs> that's great, guys. Um, we can do a little bit of a vlog situation where we just talk about what the steps are. But we won't be able to physically show you until we have a new kitten. And that's not going to happen anytime soon. Because we just... Knock on wood. Don't have the space. Oh. <laughs> I hope this little list of pros and cons helped some of you decide whether to get a cat or not or whether to get a pet or not. If it was helpful, please leave us a like and a comment. Let us know what you think are pros and cons of having a pet, pet or, or a cat. And also, we launched our website just the other day. So if you haven't yet, go check it out. It's momosiamese.com. It's still a work in progress. There's some treats on there, some DIY project, mostly all the videos we've made, but we are filling it up quickly with specifically recipes. A lot of people ask about treat recipes and so on. So those are going to go there and some DIY cat toy builds and that kind of stuff. If there's anything else you'd like us to share on that website, please leave us a comment about that as well so we can get working on that as soon as possible. And then always remember to hit that subscribe button and go find us on Instagram at Mo the Siamese. And we'll check you in the next one. Bye. Bye.